Today's lesson, my name is today's lesson, my name is Alfred Jeremiah. And in today's lesson, we will be learning how to derive the quadratic formula. In our previous lesson, we talked about how to solve quadratic problem by computing the square. Okay, so in case you miss out on that lesson, you can look out for our videos on solve quadratic problem by computing the square. So for quadratic formula, we're going to use rules of completing the square to see how we can derive the productive formula okay we're going to follow it step by step to derive the productive formula so sit tight with your pen with your paper and let's prove the productive formula we are given that ax square plus bx plus c is equal to zero we should prove that x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. I'm talking about equation 1. That is to say, we are to use the given equation. Let's call the given equation equation 0. Alright, let's call it equation 0. We are to use equation 0 to prove equation 1. So, according to the rule, completing the square rule, number 1 says, Transform the equation so that the constant term c is alone on the right hand side. That is, transform c in equation 0 to the right hand side. And once that is done, we have ax squared plus bx equals to minus c. Y root 2 says, if the coefficient of x squared is not 1, then divide both sides by a. So the coefficient of x squared must be 1. For here, it is a. So we need to eliminate a by dividing all through by a. And once that is done, A is going to cancel out A, and we are left with equation 3, which says, says AX squared plus BX over A equals to minus C over A. All right? Root 3 says look for half the coefficient of X, square it, and add it to both sides of the equation. That means root 3 has three parts. Number 1 is for we to look for half the coefficient of X. Half of the coefficient of X is what here? Yeah, not X squared. I mean X. X is what? Is what B over a that is the coefficient of x half of it means we should multiply it by what one over two and once that is done we are going to have b over two a then the third part you say we should square it the third part say we should add it to both sides of the equation so we have b over two a square it that means it's going to be square all right and add it to both sides of the equation and we have equation 4 all right so b over 2a all square is added to both sides of equation side of equation 4 equation rule 4 said factor the left side as the square of the bind of a binomial that is to say we should collect like terms of all the terms that are squared all right and once that is done we have equation 5 okay the right side of equation 5 we have we have minus c over a that is from equation 4 and plus b squared over 4a squared. That is to say, b over 2a in equation 4, all square, is multiplying by itself. That is to say, b over 2a, again, times b over 2a. b times b is b squared, 2 times 2 is 4, and a times a is what? 4a squared. That is how we got equation 5. All right? Now, we just rearrange equation 5, and once that is equation 6, how do we get equation 6? The denominators for equation 5 there, we have 4a squared and a. Alright, now, how do we know if the denominator is 4a squared? We'll go by our LCM that we taught before. Alright, the LCM there, the denominators are 4a squared and a. What are the two of them? We have a. a can divide 4a squared. Once we divide 4a squared, we are left with what? 4a. If you divide itself, we have what? 1. A can still divide 4A. Once it's done, we have what? 4. 4 can divide itself, we have 1. So we have what? 4 times A times A is equal to what? 4A squared. So that is how, that is how we got the denominators of 4A squared in equation 6. Rule 5 says take square root of both sides of the equation. That is to say we have to square both sides of the equation. And once that is done, you see that 2 can cancel square root remember your indices 
all right that once you have square root same thing as saying y is equals to 1 over 2 and in a case where it is all square that means 2 is going to cancel 2 all right so that is how we got equation 7 where 2 is cancelling square root and you can see also that on the right hand side of equation 7 we have plus or minus once you square a quadratic problem both sides you are going to introduce a plus or minus sign on the right hand side because we are talking of quadrat that is you are going to have two answers a negative and a positive answer okay so that is why the plus or, mi plus or minus sign is introduced okay and they can as well divide themselves as square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 4 square root of 4a square. All right, four, square root of 4a square is the same thing as saying root 4 times root a square. All right, where root 4 is equal to what? a is equal to 2 rather. And root a square, 2 can cancel 2. We are left with what? 2a. So that is how we got equation 8. All right. That's how we got equation 8. Okay, now at this point, you can see we have x plus b over 2a. We need to ensure that we make x subject of the equation. That is what rule 6 is saying. Solve for s by making x subject of the equation. So when you move plus b over 2a to the right-hand side, we have what? Minus b over 2a plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4a is 4ac divided by 2a. All right? Now you can see we have fractions with same denominators, so we group them together. We are going to have equation nine, which is our quadratic formula. All right. So at this point, I believe we must have learned and understood effectively how to derive the quadratic formula. We can as well test our knowledge if you really understand by also proving it. In this case. You are not going to use x. It's going to be y. Okay. Let's see how we can prove the proof, the quadratic formula by using y instead of x. Thank you very much. We welcome your your exercise. Submit it on the comment section. Trust me, if you do it, you will be good at it. You will be very effective at solving productive problems.